notes. <coughs> First impressions matter. Everyone knows this, including Jeff Cummings and Alan Dennis. First impressions can have an anchoring effect on individuals so that future observations and interactions are affected by this initial impression. So yeah, they matter. That's why when you meet someone, you give them a firm handshake and look them in the eye, because that builds your character in their eyes. It shows that you are confident in the person that you are introducing to them. Now, this kind of contradicts the line, don't judge a book by its cover. Because, well, judging a book by its cover is saying that this is bad because it looks bad, when in actuality you haven't looked at the contents yet. Maybe good, you don't know. But so, is it first impressions matter, or is it don't judge a book? Well, the only example I could come up with that's good enough is not a book, but album covers, because album covers kind of stand alone from the music if they're good. If they don't, then they kind of bleh, and you know, you, it's really up to you whether or not they're good or not. But to show you like directly what kind of difference an album cover would make, I've taken one cover out of one and left the other one in. So which one looks more appealing? Which one would you rather buy? This is the interaction part. Yeah, this one? It's because there's stuff going on. There's something there. You got something to look at instead of nothing. This is just CD. This tells you that there's music here, but you don't know anything about the person who, anything. You just don't. Now, if I put the album cover back in the case and then ask you the same question, has your answer changed? Yes, the right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought because this album cover is better than this one. Sergeant Peppers is better than whenever you need someone. Somebody miss said that. Whoops. Now, what makes an album cover good is the main question here. So, what makes this Wrong one. What makes this iconic and this not so much? Probably at least. Mainly, well, this one is kind of a ripoff of the Beastie Boys 1986 album. But, you know, I guess it was some way to pay honor to the Beastie Boys when Eminem did that. But Beastie Boys didn't know who Eminem was, so it didn't really work. But when I'm talking about like this generation of album covers, comparing 1967's top album, Sgt. Pepper's, to 2017's top album, Damn, by Kendrick Lamar. Uh, there's not much going on there. He's there. There's a brick wall behind him. You got the title. Not much else. You can't gather a whole lot from this. There's not a story behind it. I looked it up. I looked at the Wikipedia article. There's maybe about that much about the cover. Oh, this Wikipedia article has about five paragraphs about the album cover because there's more to it. They put more effort into this so that it can stand alone from the album. Meanwhile, Kendrick Lamar didn't really seem to try as heard. So you have to kind of ask yourself a couple questions about what makes a good al album cover. First one is the most important is, does it look cool? Do you like the way it looks? Does it have any appeal? Do you want to keep looking at it when you started looking at it? A couple of good examples. Again, not popular because they're not mainstream and mainstream albums don't really have, seem to have good covers. 2018's Anthem of the Peaceful Army by Greta Van Fleet has nice colors, space, two, sun, moon, you don't know. It's just got good illustration. I just, it's pleasant to look at. And Tarkus by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, which came out in 1971, has an armadillo tank. I, it just looks cool. I would, want, I would want to buy that album just so I could hear what, whatever made them think to put an armadillo tank on the cover. I want to know about this. I, I think it's a good cover. Bless you. Now the next question, now, you're welcome. Now the next question you kind of have to ask yourself is, is there any significant meaning to this? Uh, a couple good examples is Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. Now Pink Floyd had a lot of trouble with the music industry at this time. And they felt that by every deal they would get the short end of the stick. So, some uh, representation here. This guy is Pink Floyd. This is the music industry. This is every deal they make. Do you see the symbolism? It has a meaning. They felt that they were getting burned by every single time they put out a song, they put out an album. And so that represents that era of Pink Floyd. It shows more than just what the songs would show. Another example of any significant meaning is George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. And I included both because uh, this is a remaster and this is the initial release. Because in the colored one, you can tell that these are garden gnomes because in black and white, they just look terrifying. And 
it, this is just more defined over here. <laughs> now, George Harrison was part of a band that most people know called the Beatles. And if you realize, use your eyes here, four Beatles, four garden gnomes. You, f you following me here? George Harrison, in that picture, both of them actually, he is standing alone from the garden gnomes. He's not paying them any mind. He's not giving them time of day. This album was his first album after the band broke up. So this is him just leaving that era behind him. This is him standing apart from the rest. That's the meaning behind that. Next question you got to ask yourself is, does it have a story? There's only one good example of this that I could find, and it's by my favorite band, The Doors, so I had to include it. This album is called Morrison Hotel, and if you don't know, the lead singer's name is Jim Morrison. So when they stumbled upon this, they thought, well, we got to take a picture. So they went in, they said, they walked up to the clerk and they said, hey, can we take a picture in front of that? And the clerk said, no. So what they did is they waited around, waited till the clerk got busy, had to answer the phone, had to check something. So they scrambled in, posed for the picture, snapped the picture, and then ran out of there and decided, hey, let's use this for an album cover. And they did, and it looks pretty good. It fits the theme. It just, they were a very rebellious band too, so it kind of shows that just by what they did to get to this cover. That's the only good example I could find for that question. Another good one that most people would agree with is, does it set the tone for the album? <coughs> there, here's a couple good ones. Jimi Hendrix Experience, or You Experienced. Uh, you can already tell what this, cover, what this album, the songs are gonna be like, because you can tell when they took the picture even, they weren't sober. <laughs> they got the fisheye lens, they got this weird contrast of colors with that strange font. You can tell that when they wrote the songs and that when they designed everything that went into that album, they were on, you know, more than just oxygen. They had a lot more in their system. And this one, is, it's a concept album. I didn't bring it with me. I did for second hour, but you missed that. Uh, it's a concept album. And what a concept album is, is that it's an album that tells a story. So in the pamphlet that comes with that, there's about five pages of just paragraph after paragraph of a, of a legitimate story, like fiction. And that story lays the foundation for the lyrics. And this, these pictures lay the foundation for the story, which lays the foundation for the lyrics. It's a step-by-step -step program kind of thing. And this goes with most concept albums, including Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and there were several others. They're not really too famous. Another question is, does it support the tone set by the album's title? This doesn't happen too often, so I only got a couple examples. Another Pink Floyd and another Beatles, but Pink Floyd's is The Wall. You can kind of tell just by the name that it's a little ominous, and then with that font mixed with the brick-layered background, it gives a sense of isolation and like looming danger. And the Beatles, well, this was the first album they had where they didn't have their producer to help them mix the songs. So it was just them. There was nothing more to it. And this was their album after Sgt. Pepper's. So going from having a lot on the cover to practically nothing shows their shift. And again, uh, they were also on a lot of drugs. So that probably had something to do with it also. Most of these people actually were. Now, my last and favorite question is, does it convey a message? This doesn't happen a whole lot, uh, but it happens with my favorite artist, not just band, that's The Doors, this is artist, Peter Gabriel, whose first four albums looked like this. Uh, there's a lot of design that went into this. You can tell one thing immediately, they don't have any titles on them. It's just the official titles are Peter Gabriel 1, Peter Gabriel 2, 3, and 4. Not much thought went to the title, and also his face is obscured in some way in every single picture. That one, uh, they had to set up a lot of uh, mirrors and lights and uh, distorted lens to take that picture because they didn't have Photoshop, so they, they legitimately had to find out how to make his face look like that. But uh, these weren't too successful. The most successful one was the first one, which was only certified gold, which if you know anything about certifications, that's not too uh, aspiring. But then his fifth album was just called So. It had a name, unobscured face, everything about it is just almost opposite of what his last ones were. And people think that the So in this title stands for sellout and that he was giving the people what they wanted. He was going mainstream. He was succumbing to what was popular at the time. And then this album went five times platinum.
that's a big jump from uh, being the best, best one being gold. So yeah, uh, it's, that's the message there. That's him just deciding to screw it and leave all of his other stuff behind him and go mainstream, follow the trends. So I, I keep rambling on about what makes a good album cover, but the real question here is, why does it matter? What's important about this? Well, an album cover is the claim. It's the hook. It's what pulls you into the album to start with in general. It's what you see first when you go to listen or purchase anything when it comes to music. So albums with good covers can draw you in by the album cover alone. You see it, you want it, you buy it. That's how it works. If it has a decent cover, then you have to stretch it a bit and maybe the cover, but along with the music, if you know it. Now, if it's got a bad cover, it's really a kind of a good luck situation because hopefully you know the songs on it, hopefully you know the person who released the album because the cover's not doing anything for you. Now, I've got a couple of examples of like good and bad covers. Here's some good ones. I've got Sgt. Pepper's up there. I've got one by Jonathan Colton, one by J. Cole that I've never listened to, but I love that cover. Uh, we've got Led Zeppelin, which has a story to it. Billy Joel, another story. This one just looks cool. Uh, some decent ones that kind of you have to stretch for are these four I've got up here. The Doors, another one. Uh, they're rocking the McDonald's colors. So I don't, I guess it makes you feel a little hungry. I don't know. That's about it. Nothing else is really kind of attracting me there. We got another Peter Gabriel down here, which is, this was after a divorce and after his children stopped talking to him. So maybe he was a little down in the down dumps. Uh, we got Charles Gambino's album, which, you know, catches your eye because that bright color contrast with the background. But then you make eye contact and it's terrifying. Uh, we've got Jim Croce down there who, again, it's kind of one of a similar situation with the doors up here. There's not much going on. It's just him. And there's not much appeal to that other than just this is the guy who made the music. Wow, hopefully you know him, because if you don't, then you might like it, maybe not. Some bad covers uh, would include <laughs> Backstreet Boys Millennium, which is definitely a product of its times. You can tell just kind of by looking at it. We got one of the most influential albums of the 60s, which just looks stupid. The Beach Boys Pet Sounds, they're at a petting zoo feeding animals, and those guys were right there with the Beatles and somehow managed to look like that. We've got uh, Jason Aldean, who's in a shed. That's about it. We got an amusement park, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We gotta go dropping popcorn. He's breathing fire. What else is going on here? We got Drake, Blue Sky, him. Not much. I'm not seeing much. So this kind of wraps back. Do first impressions matter, or should we not judge these those bad ones by what they look like? I think that we should create a new quote, a new type of way to define how you look at things. First impressions matter because every book cover should be judged by its cover. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta turn the mic off.